Hi there, welcome to That Board Game Show. My name is James Wood, and today I'm going to show you One Deck Dungeon, Forest of Shadows. A 1-2 player game designed by Chris Chishik, with art by Will Peitzer, and published by Asmadi Games. Adventure Calls! Layers of monstrous enemies have sprung up all over the countryside. As heroes, your duty is clear. Conquer every dungeon, defeat every foe, and overcome every peril. As is tradition, you'll enter each dungeon with only the simplest equipment, and gather better loot as you delve. A deck of encounter cards contains all the dangerous foes and perilous obstacles you'll come across. Each card also shows the loot and experience gained by surviving your encounter. You'll need every advantage, because every time the deck is reshuffled, you'll descend one floor deeper. Each time you do, all the monsters and traps will get stronger and more perilous. If any hero runs out of health, the game will end. If you make it through three floors, the dungeon's boss awaits you at the bottom. Defeat it to claim victory! One Deck Dungeon Forest of Shadows is a sequel slash expansion for One Deck Dungeon. The two can be combined to play with up to four players, or you can combine two sets of Forest of Shadows. What's different in Forest of Shadows to the original One Deck Dungeon is the introduction of poison tokens. You'll see how those work as we play. And today I'm going to show you how we play by playing out a few rounds of the solo game just to give you a sense of how it plays and how it feels. And the difference between the solo game and the two-play game is very, very minimal. There are some more minor tweaks for a four-play game, which I personally have never played, so I can't really speak to those. But they're in the rules, should you care to explore that. But today's focus is the solo play. So I have chosen to play as the Druid today. Out of this assortment of characters, we've got the Slayer, the Hunter, the Alchemist, the Warden, and Kaliana, and you'll also notice that all the characters have a one-player side and a two-player side. And they are also all female. So we've got the Slayer, the Druid, the Hunter. These are all female characters, which is quite a refreshing change from your typical dungeon crawler where everything's just brawny, beefy, muscular men. So today we're playing the Druid, against the Mudlands dungeon. Well, we call it dungeon because it's based on one deck dungeon, but really we're in a forest. We're delving through a forest more so than a dungeon. So when it refers to descending a level, we're just going deeper into that forest. So I've chosen to play against the Mudlands area today. And in the Mudlands, we are going to be facing off against the Mud Golem at the end of the encounter, if I survive that long. As you can see, there are several other areas that we can choose to explore through. We have the Phoenix's Den, the Lair of Indrax, the Realm of Venom, the Vile Roots, and the Smoldering Ruins, all of which come with their own scary, terrifying, deadly boss. And you'll see how all of these things work as I play. So I'm just gonna dive straight in and start playing. But before I do that, I should say that there are two ways you can play this game. You can play it as a one-off adventure, like I'm going to do today, or you can play it as a campaign. So the game comes with this sheet of campaign pages. I'll show you one here that I've already completed. So this was one I played with the hunter. And as you complete each game when playing the campaign, you'll mark off these little checkboxes, thus gaining experience and beefing up your character for future games. You have to then play through all of the different bosses to win the campaign, and you mark off how many games you played. So you're trying to defeat all the bosses in as few games as possible. But today I'm just gonna play a one-off just to show you how the game plays and give you a sense of if this is a game for you or not. So with that said, let's dive into the gameplay. I've already done all the setup. I'm not gonna get stuck in the weeds of explaining how all that works. I'm just gonna start with the first turn. So the first thing we do is we 
refer to our turn reference card, which tells us at the start of each turn, spend two time, then either explore or enter a room. So the first thing we need to do at the beginning of the game is explore. So we'll spend two time, which we do by discarding cards from the encounter deck. So we'll discard two cards, one, two over there, and then I will now explore. Draw and add face down doors to the dungeon until there are four total doors in play, then resist poison. So we will draw four doors face down, creating the first room of the dungeon. Or in this case, because we're in a forest, the first glade in the forest, we'll call it. And now we have to resist poison. And I'll explain how that works a little bit later when I have some poison on my character. Because at the moment, nothing will really happen. So that was my first turn. We are playing with two players. Play would now proceed to the next player and they could choose what they want to do. Playing solo today, it just comes straight back to me. And I will now spend two time at the start of my turn. One, two. And now I'm going to choose to enter a room. So first thing I do is I choose a door and I open that door, entering that room. So let's open this door. And oh my, we find some sharp cliffs. So this is a peril encounter. So these represent traps and obstacles that you're going to encounter along the way. And it requires me to make a choice. I have to choose either to climb up over the sharp cliffs or I can attempt to fly over. Now, how I'll make that decision is I'll look at the color of the box required. And then I'll look at my character sheet and I will see this character has one strength, two agility, and four magic dice. So I'm much more likely to be able to fly over because I am a druid after all, so I can transform into a bird familiar and just flit over the sharp cliffs. So we're gonna do that. We are going to fly over. So I will assemble my pool of dice. But before we do that, we have the option to use our heroic feat. In this case, for the druid, it is to spend one time to roll one strength or one agility die. Or I can spend three time to roll two strength or two agility. And you'll see by these little icons that I can use this for combat encounters or for peril encounters. This little symbol here means that I cannot use this special ability during the boss fight at the end of the game. So let's see, I don't think that's gonna help me right now because I'm gonna choose to fly over. So I will skip over the use heroic feet step. I will just move straight on into the encounter step and I will now gather and roll my dice. So I will assemble my four magic dice, two, four magic dice from the side there. And with a peril encounter, you only roll the dice that match the color of the encounter box you have chosen to take on. In a combat encounter, which you will see shortly, you will assemble your pool of dice from all the dice in your skill set. So now that we have assembled our dice pool, we will give that a roll and attempt to fly over the sharp cliffs with a one, a three, a five, and a six. And now, before I can fly over the cliffs, I have to look at our dungeon card at the top here. And I can see that on floor one, for all peril encounters, I have to put a four on this box. And this little shield here means I have to do that before I assign dice anywhere else. So let's take this five and we'll put that over there. If I were to not do that, I wouldn't be able to put any dice over here and I would lose one time. And also while we're looking at the dungeon, it says here to spend one time when you gain an item as loot. And I'll explain what that means when it happens a bit later. So we'll put that over there. And now I will look down here and I'll see I've got six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So this is not good because I need 14. Now you'll see here, this is a large box. That means I can combine multiple dice together to place it in there. Whereas on a single box like this, you have to use a single die of four. So I couldn't, for instance, use this three and this one to cover up that box. It has to be a single die of four or greater. 
So let's see, I've got this special ability, swap the values of any two of your non-black dice. That doesn't help me. And that's also only a combat skill, so I can't use that for this peril encounter. Okay, so this is rather bad. I am going to probably fail at this. I can look over here. We've got potions up at the top here. So we start the game with a basic potion and one token. A token may be spent to use any one effect, plus the cure effect. An extra token is gained for each potion identified. So each time I add another potion in there, I get another potion token. So for now, I could spend this potion, which would trigger the cure effect, which says heal one wound or one poison any time a potion effect is used or a potion is gained. So now's not a great time to use that because I don't have any wounds or poison on my character yet. And also that would let me increase two dice by one each. That would not be enough because that would just get me to 12 because I could increase that to four and I could increase that to a two. That would only get me 12. That's still not enough to do this. So right out the gate, this was a pretty bad start. Rolling a one and a three really was not helpful and I have no way of re-rolling or anything. So now we have to suffer the consequences. I failed to successfully fly over these sharp cliffs. I'm clearly a very novice druid at this stage and my bird form didn't quite work. So I kind of spluttered out and landed on the sharp cliffs and I have taken three wounds. Owie, owie, owie. That is not fun because I only have a health of five. If I take five damage, I die, game over, everybody goes home miserable. We don't want that to happen. So I also take two poison. Oh dear, owie, owie. So my druid has taken quite a beating right out the gate. Mm -mm -mm. This is not good. But then regardless of the consequences of your encounter, as long as you survive, you can now claim that card as loot. So you learn from your experiences and I can either gain this as an item, in which case I would tuck it in over here, gaining an extra magic die the next time I have an encounter, and an extra health, which would be quite good. However, in the mudlands, I have to be quite careful of that because I must spend one time whenever I gain an item as loot because I'm stuck in the sludge. So every item I take is going to hinder my movement just a little bit more and make me spend more time trudging through this area. Or I can take this item as a skill. So if you see a little symbol like this, in this case an agility, that means you can tuck it at the bottom of your character sheet. And then I could use an agility die of any value to treat one challenge box as if it were any color. That could prove quite useful. Or alternatively, the other option when you claim a card as loot is if it had a potion symbol over there, instead of gaining a skill, you would tuck it under the turn reference card up here and you would gain another potion. Or finally, the last way you can use a card is by turning it sideways and tucking it into your level counter. And now you've got four experience towards leveling up. And you need six to level up from level one to level two. So I think for right now, I'm going to spend the one time because of the sludge and I'm going to tuck this in here because I think I need that extra health and more dice are always a good thing to have. But now you'll notice that I've just tucked an item here. So I must spend one time getting through the sludge a little bit more slowly because I've encumbered myself with another item. And I'm now at my item limit. So you'll see at level one, you can only hold one item and you can have at most two skills. So that is the end of that encounter. That is the end of my turn. I now clear all the dice off the challenge boxes and play would proceed to the next player. Play in solo, play proceeds straight back to me and we do it all over again. So first thing we do, spend two time, one, two, and then I will enter a room. Let's choose a door and open it, boom. And it's a goblin, oh dear. This is a combat encounter and it's a pack hunter. For each closed door, spend one time. 
Now, I have a choice. I can either encounter this right away, at which point I will trigger off this special ability, or I can run away. So if I flee, I can basically reset my turn. My turn ends immediately. And then I would have to spend two more time and I can try open another door. So right now, that's not going to be a very good option. Sometimes you have to do that. If you encounter something that you have no hope of defeating, then you don't really have much of a choice but to run away. But right now, I think I can handle a pack of goblins. So that means I have to resolve their special ability, which is for each closed door, spend one time. So I will spend one two time because there are two closed doors over here. And then I can choose to use my heroic feat, which I think I will do this time. I can spend one time to roll one strength die or one agility die. And you'll see I only have one strength die and this needs at least two. And I look up at the area we are in and I have to put a four and a five yellow strength dice up there. And I only have one, so I definitely need more which means I'm probably going to go for this one. I'm going to spend three time, one, two, three, which will allow me to roll two extra strength dice. So I'll add those to my pool. Then I will assemble the remaining pool of dice, which will be a extra strength die, two agility, and five magic, one, two, three, four, and five. And now we will roll the dice and then use feats and see what we can do. Go, 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 go. And they go all over the place. Let's see, we've got a bunch of ones, which is pretty abysmal. Um, hmm. Okay, we need, we need lots of yellows. And you'll see there are no armor boxes here. There's none with this little shield symbol. So basically when we do a combat encounter, we look at this side of the area. And when we do a peril encounter, we look at this side. You don't have to resolve both sides. If I put a three over there, I can cover up that one. And you'll see that these are all single boxes. So I have to use a single die for each of these. I don't have a six. So now I can use my Lilia bird companion. Swap the values of any two of your non-heroic dice. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to swap this blue four and this yellow six. I'm going to make this blue four into a blue six. I'm going to make this yellow six into a yellow four. And now I can use this six over here to cover up that. I can use this four over there to cover up um, let's actually cover up this one because that's going to give me a wound, which is bad. Then I need a lot more things. So I'm going to actually use a potion, which now is a very good time because I've got a whole bunch of wounds. So I'm going to glug a potion, glug, 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 glug. That will go over there. Use this potion that I've identified here, which says increase two dice by one each. So I'll increase this agility die into a five so that I can cover up that five over there. And I am now still looking for a three and a four and a yellow five. Hmm. I'm going to increase this blue die into a blue four, which you might ask, why is he doing that? Because there is no space for blue dice on these cards. Well, what I can do now is I can combine these two blue fours and I can convert them, I can transmute those into a heroic black four. And a black die is a wild. It can represent any color. Now I can put this black four on any of these spaces except for the five, which is the one I really wanted to cover up. But let's just cover up at least one of these. So there, that's going to save us a little bit of time. And now I've done what I can. I can't use any of these low values. They're not helping me. I have no way of re-rolling any dice. So I will now resolve the encounter and that is going to cost one, two, three time. I have to discard one, two, three. It took quite a while to deal with this little pack of goblins. And I am inflicted with one poison because I spent a lot of time trudging around the sludge. So now we will discard all of these dice back to their respective pools. 
and we can now claim the goblin as loot. So again, we can take the item, we can take the skill, or we can take the experience. So I think I'm just going to take that as experience. I'm going to chalk that up as some experience and tuck it in over there and proceed to the next turn. So spend two time at the top of the turn, open a door, and we encounter a thorn spitter, a petal. Oh dear. We can choose again, do we strike down the thorn spitter or do we evade the thorns? The one will require strength and the other will require agility. And I am garbage at both of those things, so I'm going to run away from the thorn splitter. I shall flee and we shall spend two time, one, two, to encounter the other door. Let's hope for something I can actually defeat over here. We encounter a rope bridge. Now that's a bit more manageable. Okay, I am going to bolster the rope bridge. I'm not going to attempt to sprint across it because my agility is rubbish. So let's see, I shall bolster using my druidical skill set, which means I have to spend two time, one, two. So I wouldn't have had to spend that time had I chosen to sprint across, but it takes time to repair the bridge. I will assemble my pool of five magic dice. I clearly don't do this bolstering with any physical things. My druid does it with all magic. And that is all the dice I get. I will roll my pool because remember with the peril encounters, you only roll the dice that match the color of the box you chose to deal with. So we'll roll that. And first things first, we have to put the four up over there. And then that was easy, six, seven, eight, nine, combine those over there, job done. That was a doddle, my druid is really good at fixing stuff. Okay, so discard all of those, straighten that, and take the rope bridge either as an item, a potion, or experience. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to replace this item. So you'll see I only have one item slot at level one but I know that this one item that I picked up earlier has got four experience points on it. So if I replace an item, if I discard this and replace it with some rope I found, therefore increasing my agility, I don't just throw this away. I take this item and I tuck it in here, increasing my experience. And the same applies if you were to gain a skill and replace it. So, now I have got the six experience I need to level up, which is a very good thing. So let's take those two. Those now get discarded back to the box, along with this level one card. And we are now at level two. We've improved the level and the strength and the abilities of our druid. And we gain one potion for reaching level two, which we add to our little potion supply over there. Whenever we gain a potion, we also can heal one wound or one poison. I will heal one poison because poison is terrible. Or actually, scratch that, I'm going to heal one wound because I already have three wounds and that is very bad. Then you will see here we get one heroic die as an encounter bonus. So I'll put that over there to remind us. And basically, that means every encounter I get this extra wild heroic die, which is very helpful. Now I will spend two time at the start of a new turn. One, two. And I will now explore. I don't want to encounter this thorn spitter just yet, even though I've now got the three dice, because I want to show you something a bit unique with the Forest of Shadows version of One Deck Dungeon and that is how poison works. So I'm going to explore, which means I will reveal doors until there are four total, whether they be open or closed. So I'll only reveal three. So as you can see, it's better typically to try and resolve the encounters as you open the doors, because otherwise you're wasting quite a lot of time. But right now I have explored. 
Now I must resist poison. So I come over to here, my poison reference. At the end of an explore turn, the party must resist poison. To attempt to resist poison, roll one die and add one to it for each leaf symbol on an open door. If the total is greater than the number of poison on the heroes, you succeed. So that's why I chose to leave this one here. I can actually harvest some of the leaves from this thorn spitter to try and heal the poison on me. Although my chances are not great because I have three over here. So now I must roll a single d6 and I rolled six. Look at that. <laughs> okay, so that means I succeed. That's very good. So when you succeed, remove one poison from one of the heroes. Boom. And if there were multiple players, then we would choose amongst us which person gets to remove the poison. Had this number been lower, let's say it had been a one, then I would have added one from the thorn splitter over here. That would have been two, which would have not been greater than the number of poison on my character. Had that happened, we still would have discarded a poison token, but we would have replaced it with two wounds, which is very not good. That would have put my druid very close to dead. But as it is, we managed to scrape through and survive. So that was the end of an explore turn. I will spend two time, one, two, and I will do another encounter. And I think I'm going to just speed up the gameplay now. I've explained all the basics of how everything works. So now I'm just going to play through a few more turns until I get to the end of this deck and I can show you how it works when we descend to another floor. So I've spent two time. I'm going to open a door. And we have another rope bridge. Oh my goodness me. This time I think I'm going to try sprint across. Let's see how that goes. I've got three agility now. So let's roll my three agility dice. Might regret this decision. I definitely regret this decision because I chose not to use my heroic feet. This would have been a good time to use that. You have to use your heroic feet before you roll your dice. Oh dear. Okay, so we'll put the four up there because we have to. I can't choose to ignore that. And then I've only got eight. Ah, but... I am forgetting that I can roll this wild heroic die because of leveling up. So we get a two, oh my word. <laughs> Talk about by the skin of your teeth. Clearly, as I step foot onto the other side of the ravine, the rope bridge just disintegrates behind me because I only just made it. Only, only just. Okay, so we succeeded. Phew! By the skin of our teeth. Okay, so let's put that back over there, those back over there, and now do I want to bolster my strength? Do I like the look of this ability, which would let me discard two agility dice to roll three agility dice and then discard one of them? So essentially re-rolling my two dice, or I can get some more experience. So as you saw when I replaced that item, which I just remembered I should have spent a time for. I forgot to do that because of the sludge in the mudlands. So let's just do that now. Each time you replace an item, it goes over into the experience pool. So it can actually be better rather than tucking it straight into experience to actually gain either the skill or the item because then you get the benefits of it and then you can replace it later on and that will bolster your experience. Because I need these yellow dice up here for all combat encounters, I need at least two yellow dice. So I'm going to gain that as an item, tuck it in there. I now have two strength, three agility and four magic. But I must spend one time because I have encumbered myself in the sludge with another item. And we will spend two time, one, two, open it all. And a moss golem, oh my goodness, that's a big one. Okay, this should be interesting. So, spend two time when you place a heroic die on this card. Mm. So you want to avoid putting your heroic dice on here if you can. I am definitely going to use my heroic feet this time. So I'm going to spend three time, one, two, and three. And I'm going to get two strength dice because this has got a 10 armor box of strength. So before I can put dice on anything else, I have to cover up that. 
Okay, so now let's bring on our heroic die from our level there. We'll get three agility, one, two, three, four magic. And that is all. Give these a roll and hope for the best. Wish me luck. Um, that's not half bad. Not half bad at all. Okay. So I can just put those two over there, which takes care of that. That's pretty good. So that's 12 on that armor box, which needs 10. I could use my potion to increase stuff. I think that's probably not a bad idea. Yes, I'm going to use this potion, glug, glug, glug. And I'm going to increase two dice by one each. And whenever I use a potion, I trigger off the cure effect, which lets me heal a wound or a poison. I will heal a wound, I think, because as bad as poison can be, you saw how it can also just go away. Okay, so now I can increase two dice by one each. So I'm going to increase this blue five into a six, and I'm going to increase one of these pink fours into a five. Then I can put a five over there, I can put a four over there, I can put that six over there, I can put that five over there, and then I need a six over there, which I can't get. I can, however, combine these two fives, or I could combine this five and this four. If you combine different numbers, you take the lower value of the two. So I can take a black heroic four, and then I can put that in over there. So those get discarded. I can swap the values of any two of your non-heroic dice. That's not gonna help me right now. And that is all. So I'm going to take one wound from the Moscow limb. Ouch. And then I can claim that card as loot. So I can gain an item, which means I would spend a time. I could gain the skill, which would let me gain a six strength, a four agility and a four magic, but spend one time. So I'd be giving up two yellow dice for one. Mm, I don't like that too much. I'm gonna gain this as an item. I'm gonna tuck that in there because that's giving me an extra health as well. I'm gonna spend one time because of the sludge. I'm then going to start a new turn. One, two, and open a door. And a rock worm. Oh my goodness me. Okay, those are both terrible things. I am actually going to run away from the rock worm flee at a clip because now I'm going to explore again. So I'm going to spend one, two time, and there we go. Okay. Now, first I have to resolve the explore and then I'll explain how this works. So draw and add face down doors to the thingy, da -da -da, da -da -da. then resist poison. I must now resist poison. And I will add two because both of these have the little poison symbol. So basically I'm guaranteed a success here whatever I roll, and I roll a two, so I would have got rid of that anyway. So now I can get rid of one poison. And now we have encountered the stairs. While visible, place a damage token here for each time spent. Each time there are three tokens here, place one on a hero and remove the other two. At the end of any turn, the heroes may descend. If this card is revealed while spending time to start a turn, the heroes may descend immediately. I wouldn't actually have resisted poison. Let's rewind that. Because as soon as this is revealed, if you're spending time at the start of a turn, you can immediately descend. So that's what I'm going to do. So these get discarded over to here. And now to descend, we increase this level. And now we have to deal with all of that in every encounter. We take our encounter deck, we give it a shuffle. And I know some of you are cringing right now as I riffle shuffle. But as you can see, this game has been played quite a lot. Which you can tell by looking at my little campaign sheet over here, seeing how many different games I've played. And this deck is still holding up pretty well, even though I've always riffle shuffled it. So, 
not telling you that you should do that, but also telling you that these cards anyway can stand up to it quite well. Now we would start the second round and we'll simply keep going and playing like this turn after turn after turn until eventually we have gone through the deck a second time. We'll then descend to level three. Once we've gone through the entire deck again, we will then reveal the mud golem and then we have to fight them at which point we would flip over this turn reference to be a boss fight. So I'll just go over quickly how a boss fight would work. Obviously by that point you would have a lot more skills, you'd have a lot more items, you'd be a lot more beefy, you would have leveled up quite a few more times. So right now I wouldn't stand much of a chance against this boss, but after going through three floors your chances are a lot better. If I were to face off against the boss right now, I would assemble my pool of dice. Let's see, I've got four agility, I've got two strength, I've got the one heroic, and I get four magic. One, two, three, four magic. Okay, so at the top of each turn during a boss fight, if you must spend time during the boss fight, you will exile a die instead. And exile a die means you'll take a die from the pool and discard it out of the game permanently, thus losing access to that die for the remainder of the game until you've defeated the boss. Then the boss fight is like in a combat encounter, fought over multiple rounds. In each round, the first thing we do is resist poison. So step one, we would resist poison. We rolled six, is greater than two, succeed, discard a poison. Then roll the dice, we would roll the dice and assign them to the boss. And then you'll see on the boss, we've got these little symbols here. So the first thing to remember is you can't use your heroic feats during a boss encounter and the boss will inflict damage to the players, but the players can also inflict damage to the boss by covering up these symbols. So for instance, if I were to put this six over there, that's covering up one symbol. So that would deal one damage to the boss. Against the mud golem, at the start of each round, exile four dice. So this one makes you lose dice pretty rapidly. So you really want to take down this mud golem as fast as you possibly can. So let's see, with my current pool of dice, I would not stand a chance because I can't really combine these into anything. <laughs> let's see, I've got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to cover up that 22. So as you can see, Right at the beginning of the game, you stand virtually no chance of beating a boss. But let's say I'd built up a whole bunch more dice. I'd be able to combine a whole bunch of blue dice to cover up that 22, a whole bunch to cover up that. Anytime you see the little wounds here, that's gonna be you taking damage. And if you're playing with multiple players, you must always distribute the damage as evenly as you possibly can. But I think that gives you a really good idea of how One Deck Dungeon Forest of Shadows plays. If you have any questions about what you've seen here, please drop them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. And with that, I'll say thank you ever so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the show.